So uh, let's get started to make the best of the time that we have parked for each other. Okay. Um, few households to start with. Uh, let's keep our mics on mute uh, for the Zoom to work properly. I mean, in the world of online meetings, uh, that's one thing that we need to maintain as hygiene. However, I'll please encourage everyone to be inquisitive, be interactive. And the way to do that would be just uh, type in your feedback, questions, queries, whatever is there in the chat box, raise hands in the Zoom. Okay. And yeah, uh, I'll surely notice them. If I miss them out, uh, please, uh, Bhushan sir or anybody else from the panel, uh, help out to bring that to notice. Okay. Um, to start with a quick 30 seconds of who I am, my introduction. Um, so my name, Bhushan Sir mentioned, Prabhat Pustake. Um, I'm a mechanical engineer by DNA, but profession uh, has now pushed me into corporate and industry. So uh, that made me do an MBA. So I'm an MBA from Indian School of Business, uh, Hyderabad. I spent around uh, 15, almost 16 years in corporate, so, uh, typically into product and brand building. Uh, my alma mater organizations uh, have been Mahindra, Mercedes-Benz, uh, Bajaj Auto. I'm currently working with Cummins, uh, it's a US-based MNC. Besides uh, my work interest, my passion uh, is uh, mentoring, guiding, and career counseling. So I am uh, deeply engaged with Indian School of Business. Um, I am Bangalore, I am Kolkata, I am Lucknow, XLRI, I am Udaipur, SPGen, uh, multiple institutes uh, in the role of a mentor, guide, career counselor to their ongoing batches. That's something which uh, keeps me motivated and uh, that's very much the reason for uh, me to uh, communicate with you guys. So, and Bhushan, so thanks a lot for that opportunity. I'm really glad and excited to interact with all of you and uh, at the, to have the opportunity to be able to contribute in whatever small way uh, to your guys. Okay. Um, before leaving the slide, a uh, bit about my family. So I'm married, my wife is a homemaker. I have a beautiful kid, parents, and of course, family, friends who are part of my family. So talking about uh, our agenda. So we are focusing on employability and skill development. Uh, typically, when we take this topic, it's a much longer topic. Uh, we take that as a two days workshop and generally to be really effective and uh, result oriented. Having said that, uh, uh, we have tried our best to create kind of a capsule of uh, the whole content. Okay. So today, what we'll be focusing upon is uh, uh, two principal things. One is uh, understanding and understanding the approach to a sustainable employability. Okay, so what goes as a critical uh, ingredients into the recipe of uh, employment or a career, so to say. And the second thing that uh, I will try to leave you guys with is a wonderful tool for advanced skill development. Okay. It's a very powerful tool. I'll introduce you guys, and uh, uh, it's just fantastic. Uh, Excuse me. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, there is one suggestion. Uh, can you speak a bit louder? Oh, sure. uh, is it better now? For me, it is. Okay. Uh, I'll continue at this pitch. If uh, the problem still persists for anyone, please feel free to uh, type into chat box. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, focus for today, number one, uh, to talk about that, what are the essential ingredients of uh, creating a sustainable employment in today's world. And second, uh, we'll talk about a very powerful tool uh, for identifying that, how to develop skills and go about it. Okay. So let's uh, make a quick dive deep. Okay. So, you can see there are multiple keywords on the screen right now. And the way I define these keywords as a single metaphor is the central tenets. Okay. So all of them together and individually, they are essential parts of a successful employment, successful job, successful career in today's era. And we'll talk about all of them uh, uh, one by one. 
and yeah, we'll focus on uh, some of them which are more precedent these days. Uh, the first one uh, is certainly self-awareness, okay? And uh, that is uh, the starting point of any journey in career and employment. So friends, you would uh, know that getting oneself is the first step towards the starting, towards starting the journey of uh, building a career, building a life. Okay? And at a stage where most of you would be, there are two levels of self-awareness which are encouraged to be worked upon. So one is, uh, uh, there's a point over here. So one is about individual personality that uh, uh, what is an individual's inclination is about. Okay, so individual preferences, likes, dislikes, that kind of self-awareness. And the second is about uh, career self-awareness. Okay, that professionally uh, to be cognizant about uh, uh, the prospects, the challenges of oneself. For general awareness, uh, there are multiple tools to go about this. Uh, there's a 360 degree profile mapping, which is a standard technique, personality mapping. Here, one tool which is very uh, widely acknowledged, and I'll encourage uh, all of you to take it, is MBTI. So that's called a myers brick uh, type indicator. Maybe I'll type that into chat box. Uh, this is a very powerful tool and uh, it's uh, online version is free of cost available to uh, anybody who wants to assess this. Okay. So uh, the first step is to understand what is your personality, introvert, extrovert, research oriented uh, or clinical uh, or uh, maybe mass personality the different kind of personality types. So that's individual second is about career. Uh, so what kind of education one likes to have or one is having, the work experiences that are adding on to that work so education, the pro bono assignments which keep building uh, our experiences and our skills. Okay. That's uh, the first piece of creating self-awareness. The second critical piece is uh, domain knowledge. Okay, that, uh, Everybody in the world uh, is expected to be one person, subject matter expertise, as well as a wider experienced person of multiple domains. Okay. But having said that, a uh, T-shaped profile is something which is always recommended in today's uh, professional world. And by T-shape, what it means is that, that it should have a horizontal breadth, but a depth into one particular domain. Okay. And that depth helps one to create a long-term sustainable career. So that's where domain knowledge because takes a key position into, uh, say, when we talk about central tenets of employment. Now, this domain knowledge can be built through education, certainly. But beyond education, also, there are multiple ways in which uh, uh, students and upcoming professionals should give effort to build domain knowledge. So there are conferences and conclaves, summits, expert sessions, interaction with the uh, courses. Those are all the multiple ways of building and extending domain knowledge. Uh, next central tenet is uh, leadership. Okay, now leadership uh, not essentially always means that uh, to lead a large crowd, but uh, the leadership in today's professional world is required at uh, each and every step of work assignment. It could be as well leading an individual single contributor work assignment. It could as well be leading a larger group, uh, vertical organization, anything. Okay, but essentially that's something which, uh, if lacking, becomes a challenge these days. Uh, having said that, the good part is that the world is pretty connected these days. So leadership opportunities are available to explore and assess oneself as well as to build the leadership in the long run. Uh, they're available at institute level, industry level. One can as well develop leadership opportunities by shadowing a leader, shadowing a successful person whom you think can, uh, is an example in leadership. Okay. So observing and the association is one of the best way of learning. So that's about uh, leadership. Next important uh, thing that I want to emphasize upon is uh, team decision making. Now, uh, Contrary to team decision-making, the common word that is popular is team building. Okay. 
but uh, I rather prefer to emphasize on team decision making because that's one step beyond team building. The position to be responsible for the success and failure of a team is a very critical uh, virtue in profession. Yeah. So team building is essentially a part of it. But the experience of owning the decisions and outcomes for not just yourself, but also for a whole team, that's a critical experience. The responsibility, the awareness, the foresight that comes with this kind of experience is unparalleled and gives a very long sight into career building. So that's another area where I strongly focus upon team decision making. Communication skills, uh, well, and nothing more to emphasize over here, but to say it in short, uh, an idea, a skill, a thought is only effective till it is communicated properly. Uh, the success factor of a thought, the success factor of a, a program or a project could be very high, but if it is not communicated properly, the execution might lag. Okay? The impact will not be there. So communication skills is again something which has always been a central tenet and is important. Uh, networking, I'll come in a moment, I'll take this in the last. Mm, cultural adaptability. That's again, uh, which everybody recognizes these days. Uh, you observe any large organization, uh, be right starting from Tata's to Mahindra's uh, to Microsoft to Google's and Facebook's of the world. Diversity is a central piece of the cultural or of the organization values and ethos. And uh, it's very obvious that why it is like that. The reason is that, that the world is pretty much connected now. You move out of a particular region and you start working into a corporate, it's a pretty much intercultural environment. I for sake, I interact in a day starting from America to uh, say all the regionals in India, starting from Kashmir to Kanyakumari to people in China and Korea. So cultural adaptability becomes the central uh, piece of working in an organization and employment. What is required over here is appreciation and acceptance of cultures. The acknowledgement that all cultures, people from different backgrounds have their uh, different nuances and those nuances need to be addressed and incorporated into employment environment and the employment plan, that's essential. So to say, uh, somebody said a very nice piece to me that you cannot choose your uh, uh, bosses and colleagues and workplace, they are given to you. So that's where cultural adaptability brings its precedence over everything else when it comes to a certain point. Uh, and networking, yeah. I chose to keep this at this position on the slide uh, with a very strategic thought that in today's world, uh, networking is pretty much the foundation of uh, having a successful career. Now, networking is again a very overspoken and underrated uh, quality. Networking essentially doesn't just mean to uh, know the people or to have their phone number or to have them on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Insta and all the places they were. Networking essentially means knowing the right people and networking is a two-way street. It's not just about asking people for help. It's also about helping others to receive help. So uh, always keep in mind that uh, when you try to network with someone, when you try to build networks, always have that option that what's in it for the other person. And that's where networking becomes a positive impacting quality. Going forward in situation, in multiple situations, like when you need information, when you need a connecting to organization, when you're applying for a job and you want to know that can you have a better reference or when you are in a struggle of some approval somewhere or some resource somewhere, networking is what is making differences. So between a normal career and a successful career, in today's world, this is a say, foundation stone. Networking. So uh, at this point in time, okay, uh, so you would have heard, uh, you have been, been hearing from past say, almost 10 minutes or so about uh, say, what are these qualities? So we spoke about seven of them and we spoke at a very high level about them. So we spoke about self-awareness, domain knowledge, leadership, team decision-making, communication skills, networking, cultural adaptability. But then what? 
Okay. How does this translate into a successful career? So now there are two ways for this. Okay. One is that that uh, let these qualities nurture and develop over the time. And uh, as for many successful people, the success will come your way. Okay. And the other one is a proactive approach. Okay. So what is the difference? The difference is that that even with the first approach, success will come. But it's important to be proactive to advance that success. So things may come to those who wait. It's not like that uh, success or opportunities will not come, but only the things led by those who hustle. So if one wants to jump the line, if it wants to fast track the success, it's important that we identify what is lacking and what is important okay, and bridge the gaps. And uh, the immediate question which I get is that, that fine, easier said than done, but how to do this? And to answer that, okay, uh, what I hand over is uh, a powerful tool to build uh, skills, which is uh, called as PDP. So what is PDP? PDP is a personal development plan. Uh, it's not very complicated. So the earlier thing that I told you, Myers-Briggs, it's a very scientific and complicated and algorithm-driven personality assessment test. Okay, uh, It's driven online. But PDP is very hands-on. Okay. Every individual should have a PDP in place. And PDP essentially brings out awareness about uh, where I am right now today, where I want to go, and what is my roadmap, that how will I go to that tool. Now, what is this first step of PDP? The first step of PDP is self-assessment. And don't worry, there are not too many steps. There are only two steps, okay? So the first step is a self-assessment. Uh, it's very simple. Uh, assess, where are you now? Okay. Uh, now this assessment has to be at two levels, okay? First is uh, how you perceive your abilities. So for example, and second is that, uh, uh, how others perceive you? What is others' perception towards you? So to take a classic example, uh, in case of an actor, an actor might say that, uh, hey, I'm a very good or very bad actor. But it's also important to acknowledge the perception of others, that how others uh, perceive uh, his acting skills. And that will identify his uh, current level of assessment. That is an acknowledgement. Second thing is that where, uh, where does one wants to be? So here, there are two things. One, what is your personal mission for career? Okay, and we'll talk about this in the next uh, one or two slides in more detail, that what is personal mission entails for? So what is your personal mission for career? And along with that, what is also important is that uh, what others expect from you. Now here, other could mean uh, an organization, other could mean your social circle, other could mean a uh, family, in case of a family business or a family organization. Um, other could be anybody whose contribution and assessment is important for one's career. Uh, life or society is never in isolation. It's always an embodiment of multiple factors, multiple people around us. Okay. So that's why internal as well as external factors, they create together a self-assessment. Now, how to look at this more scientifically? Okay, so let's add a framework to this, okay, to make our minds more uh, structured, clutter. Okay, so in self assessment, what do we want to know? We want to know about these four quadrants. The first quadrant is that where are you now? Okay, so the self assessment, use any personality assessment track or use your track record. So, for example, in academics, there is a track record that everybody has. So academic assessment can come from there or extracurricular past achievement. Professional assessments, what how has been the professional assessment growth trajectory? And again, this is a one's individual view, my view, that how I perceive myself on all these things. The second is about perception of others, that how perception, so peer and faculty feedback, say 360 degree feedback, ask people around you about yourself. Validate that I what you feel perceive about yourself is that the perception that others also have for you. Okay. good or bad, it could be the case. You might underrate yourself that, hey, I'm not good at this thing, but others might say, you're amazing, you're good person. So that could also be a fantastic feedback. Uh, in your case, uh, patient's feedback, I, I realize that I'm speaking to a large uh, group, or, uh, group of doctors and becoming doctors. So that could be a critical stakeholder in your case. Performance reviews uh, or uh, say assessments that you get, okay. 
So this is first assessment of two coordinates. Where are you now? Your view, others' view. Second is where you want to go. So mission. So what are your work life interests? Um, the second is very important. Work reward values. So which values may would make you feel rewarded in your professional life? Is it acknowledgement? Is it the financial success? Is it uh, uh, reaching to a certain point in your career and professional trajectory at a certain point in time, say, I want to be at this place in five years or something like that. Okay. So that work reward values, what are those? Important to ask these questions to yourself to identify, the, uh, am I on the right track? Okay. Uh, business skills, uh, we spoke about them in the last, uh, last part of the talk, okay, is that how am I faring on all those business skills? Uh, personal values, personal goals, again, is very important, okay. Uh, ignoring these would uh, result into a, a say challenge setback into a later part in professional life. So it's always important to identify that hey, I'll do something in my life. I'll not do this thing in my life in career. But it's okay. I I can do this thing also in my life in career. And to make your peace with that, to make your career plan accordingly. That's where personal values and personal goals are critical. And last but not the least, uh, employer expectations. And by here, employer again means that uh, if you are going to work in an organization, if you are going to work in a family business, if you're going to work uh, for your own, in a, say, for personal medical practice, a different kind of uh, employer environments could be there. So that's the fourth content. Okay. And assessment of these four will essentially help you to identify what are the development issues. Now, uh, the expectation is that one comes out with, uh, say, multiple development issues. It should be a laundry list if this is an honest assessment which has been done. Okay. Uh, but then what to do next with that? Okay. That's the next question. So that's the step two of personal development plan. And uh, let's quickly go towards that. So the step two is to create a personal development plan. Now, from the previous step of self-assessment, one will get multiple uh, competencies or requirements uh, from, uh, say, requirements of a long-term career building. But uh, the advisory is always that that identify one or two critical competencies where a focus can be created. Okay, uh, think about specific behavior skills or think about spe specific professional skills without which your career plan cannot succeed, and give them the highest priority. Okay, be the urgent kind of uh, approach that, hey, I want to focus on this and I want to fix this, then I'll go to the next one. Okay. Uh, second is that, that develop action plan in terms of smart goals. What does smart mean? Smart means specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. Okay. So make sure that better, whatever you're writing, whatever you're identifying, it should be specific, not vague, measurable, quantifiable. Okay, uh, you should be able to measure that, hey, I want to research, uh, say, uh, I want to publish four research papers. I want to uh, do so much of practice into this year, something like that. Attainable should be realistic, should not be like, okay, something that everybody has attained in a lifetime. Uh, we put that as an ambitious target for us. So, okay, it should be attainable, realistic, and timely. Timely is important. There should, it should be a time bound goal. Uh, also, need to identify that uh, can we do this on our own or we need others' involvement? Okay, so who can help us? Uh, faculties, uh, mentors, uh, industry professionals, your peers, your seniors who have been successful in the industry, okay? Those could be your helping hands. Your families and friends, they are certainly an essential part to help you reach your goals. Uh, identify target dates, milestones, and yeah, how will you measure yourself? I spoke about this. And uh, in cognizance with the timeline, time we are at, we are almost 30 minutes on, so quickly touching on the framework that this is one example of how one can create a PDP. There are other frameworks also, but I find this one most user-friendly. So I give this as a first thing. Uh, one can always feel free to improve upon this. Okay. So first column is very simple. Uh, what do I want to do or do better? Okay. So what is that one or two things that you have identified as your personality improvement area or a professional improvement area? Okay. Uh, so, for example, it could be uh, that I want to be abreast uh, in the upcoming developments or ongoings into so and so field. Okay, so it could be about itself. It could be about organization. Second is that what methods I will use to achieve my learning skills. So it could be like uh, I'll every day I'll allocate certain time for reading something. 
or I'll uh, have uh, discussions, frequent discussions with people who are masters in this. Um, I'll ask to people uh, uh, that, hey, what more can I do about this? I'll take guidance from people who are role models in this field of success. Okay. So those are different things in which I can identify that what, uh, how I can uh, achieve my objectives. Next is implementation part, that how will I practice and what uh, I'll apply and learn, okay? So uh, there are ways that take pro bono assignments and don't worry about earning anything out of it. The biggest earning would be the skills that one will be uh, gaining, the experience that will be gaining. So yeah, look at opportunities to gain them from anywhere. Uh, success criteria that how will you recognize that yeah, you have done something it is achieved okay and the last but not the least timelines and milestones okay? that put a time tab on it that i want to plug this gap in the next six months i want to plug this gap in the next one year a reasonable attainable timeline okay and uh, last thing that i encourage is that that Talk about your PDP to your family, friends, and people who matter to you can help you out. Speaking about your ambitions, speaking about your goals gives commitment and helps us to maintain a consistent effort towards our committed roadmap. So two pieces of advice. Look at this PDP framework. Try to build one for yourself. The suggested time is 30 minutes and create commitment for building these gaps. Okay. Uh, let me pause myself over there. Uh, I think I have consumed all of the time that was allotted to me. But having said that, uh, I'll just still keen to take questions, feedbacks from everyone and everyone. Uh, I'm also open to collaborate uh, with you all. So, NPI, NPI, I will have this shared to Vishen sir with you all these slides and uh, the framework. I'll encourage you to spend time today on this, spend at least 30 minutes on this, come up with your PDP, and I give commitment from my side that I'll uh, engage with you with constructive feedback on at least the first 10 minutes. So that's my commitment I'm giving from my side. Uh, that's all that uh, I I have planned for uh, this 30 minutes. I know it was a lot of uh, talk, a lot of content.